You're listening to episode number 20 of the Play Your Position podcast. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count. Here's your host, Mary Lou Kaser. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week of the Player Position Podcast. Today's episode is a special edition because in full transparency, I have been on the road for an entire week and did not have a chance to line up a guest for this week's episode. I've got a huge list of people in the hopper and ready to go for future episodes, but just not for this week. So I thought I would take advantage of this free time slot to share with you some thoughts about what you need to be thinking about when you attend a conference or a workshop. Conferences and workshops are huge business these days. Companies send their employees to them to learn new skills, to showcase goods and services, to mingle with top performers in specific industries and entrepreneurs who are listening today. You know how important going to live events, going to conferences, going to workshops is to building your business, to networking with the right people, to learning new skills. And if you're ready for kickoff, I'm ready for kickoff. Let the game begin. So I'm calling today's episode three creative ways for how to make the most of attending a conference. And I don't know about you, but when I get back from a conference or workshop, my brain feels like it is about ready to explode. Not only do I have a fistful of business cards to go through and think about, but I also have bags of swag, notebooks full of notes and doodles and scribbles and insights that I've gained and aha moments that I wanted to make sure I captured in the moment. And the reality is when we all get home from a conference, what happens? Well, we have to get back to work. We are faced with our families, we're faced with our jobs or careers or our businesses. And sometimes it's without even a chance to breathe. What I wanna offer out to listeners today is some strategies that you can start thinking about the next time you're gonna go to a conference and then what do you do afterwards? And since we're at the beginning of our game today, Let's look at how do you prepare in advance to go to a conference so you maximize your experience. Typically, conferences these days last anywhere from one day to three days. And if you're in the trades or you have to, or if you have to showcase your company's goods and services at trade shows, you might actually be on the road for a week at a time. Getting ready ahead of time, like anything, like playing a game of football to becoming a parent to getting your new job requires that research. And that's what I encourage you to think about next time you're going to either sign up to attend a conference or your boss comes to you or your manager comes to you and says, hey, you know, we really would like you to represent our company. There's a great workshop. There's a great trade show coming up. And we know that you're the right person to go to this. What do you do? Well, I always take the time to look ahead online at who's going to be at that conference. I look at the speakers. I look at the sponsors, I look at the testimonials from past attendees, as well as past sponsors. Getting a sense of what is talked about at conferences ahead of time just puts my mind in the right space. And so these days, every conference worth its weight in salt is going to have a website, is going to have some kind of presence online where you, the attendee, can go and take a peek at who are the people that are going to be there, who's putting it on, who are the guests, who are the expected audience members, are there going to be other people like you there? And I've even gone so far as to connect with key people that I know I want to meet at a conference ahead of schedule. So I'll reach out to them on LinkedIn let them know that I will be an attendee at this forthcoming conference and just want to jump the gun and introduce myself and say, really look forward to meeting you. That has served me well because then when I actually do meet them, they at least recognize my face. Now, they may not be able to place exactly who I am, but through a quick conversation, I can trigger their memory and they say, oh yeah, we just connected on LinkedIn. And that carries the conversation a little bit deeper because I have taken the time and the energy 
to reach out and introduce myself. So if you haven't done that before, I encourage you to try that tactic. It's actually quite successful. Now, another couple of things that you can do before you head off to a conference is get your mind right in terms of what is it that you expect to get out of this conference. Now, there's no 100% guaranteed way of identifying all the takeaways, But again, a little bit of research can put you into the framework of, okay, I can expect that this is a conference that's going to address X topic or Y topic. And what are some specific things about those topics that I don't yet know about or would like to learn that I can take back to my division, my team, my colleagues in the entrepreneurial space, whoever you might be wanting to bring back some goodies to. And having that preset mindset can carry you a long way because then you're not caught off guard sitting there and maybe something is spoken about from the stage and you weren't really already set to receive that and you miss it completely. So again, it pays to do a little bit of homework. Okay. Let's get into Move the Chains, the heart of the game, because when you are at a conference, that's when a lot of things happen. I just, like I said, was at a three-day conference. I was on the road for an entire week, and it was fabulous. It was an amazing time. Drove from Portland, Oregon, down through Reno to Las Vegas. It was a two-day trip. I did it with one of my strategic business partners and a friend, and we had just an incredible time. What that allowed us to do was to have some time to really form our game plan so that when we hit that heart of the game, we were already in motion. We already had figured out some pre-plays, and we weren't scrambling to adjust and pivot. When you're at a conference, you've registered, you're checked into your hotel room, you've become familiar with the property, you want to really be paying attention to the flow of events. Figure out where the different sponsor tables are, if there are sponsor tables. Know who you want to go see for sure. Know when you want to be in session. Know when you're going to be able to eat know when you're going to be able to take a mental break without missing the big kahunas because every conference has at least one or two big kahunas that you do not want to miss. Now, I am of the mind that You want to get as much out of every conference you attend as possible, whether that conference is a good one or turns out to be a not so good one. You can still take away lessons and insights and things that you can use no matter, again, how good or bad the conference is. So when you're on site and you're figuring out your agenda, again, this is about your strategy and what you want to get out of the conference. You may have been assigned some specific things from a manager or a boss, but if you're on your own and you've got to figure those things out for yourself, Take a little time right after registration to look over the materials that they give you, the brochures or the notebook or just the agenda, and five, 10 minutes max. Identify the breakout sessions you want to make sure you don't miss. Usually conferences of more than one day are going to have several breakout sessions. And the sad thing is we can't attend them all. So you're going to have to figure out which ones are going to give you the best return on your investment. And, you know, in all fairness, sometimes that is a crapshoot, but that pre-planning can really save you some heartache down the road. A couple of other suggestions for the heart of the conference. Many conference sponsors have what's called swag in the industry, and swag is stuff that you collect. It's pens. It's those little stress squeeze balls that you can pick up with the company logo on it. It's pads of paper to books to candy, lots of candy and lots of raffles and ways to enter. So be selective on the swag. It's okay to take some. I have just found that honestly, swag typically ends up in the garbage for me. So you have to ask yourself, how much are you really going to use whatever you pick up? Those are expenses that the sponsor tables have chosen to put into the marketplace. And so obviously it's fair game. I guess I come from the mindset of, you know, we live in a, in a world where we want to be cognizant and mindful of sustainability. And so if you know that you're just going to end up chucking all that swag before you zip up your suitcase and head to the airport. Leave the swag behind. There's no need. Get a business card. That's probably about all you will need. You can then 
file that away later or do whatever you want with it. But that's a lot less detrimental to the environment. And also it, it's, it saves the company who's put the swag out an expense because it doesn't end up in someone's landfill. It actually remains with the company that they can use with and for somebody that may actually want whatever it is. So that's just my advice, my two cents for what that's worth. So that's my little rant about swag, and I personally don't like to bring home a lot of swag, although the stuff that I do bring home I always use, especially pens and little pads of paper. Those are always handy to have lying around. Okay, so let's talk about taking the ball of the conference that you've attended into the end zone for a touchdown. Here are three ways that you can make sure you do score a touchdown and maybe multiple touchdowns after the conference is over, that you don't just leave the event and game over. You didn't get any points on the board. You're wondering what on earth just happened. Again, whether good or bad, these are some strategies, some tactics that you can employ after your next event so that you maximize and make the most of what your experience was. Number one. You want to take advantage in a good way of the connections that you make. Now, unless you remained locked away in your hotel room for the entire trip, you met and connected with people while at this conference. Make sure when you get home that you reach out to the ones who made an impact on you in a way that compels you to serve them. And I want to repeat that. A lot of times people go to conferences with the what's in it for me philosophy. I like to take the opposite side of that equation. And I go to conferences and ask myself, who am I going to meet that I would like to serve? Big, big difference. And to me, that is not just a touchdown, but that's the game-winning touchdown to the Super Bowl. Okay, service. That's what we're in business, is we want to serve other people. And a byproduct of that is earning money. That's the natural byproduct. When you give you will receive back. It's one of the laws of the universe, one of my favorites. Now, I mentioned business cards earlier. You probably collected a bunch of business cards. Most people do. And chances are good that at least one of those cards symbolizes a person who you could help get something done so their life is better. Once you're home, sooner than later, get on your computer and send a specific personalized request on LinkedIn Facebook, Twitter, or whichever social media channel is your favorite flavor. We all have one or two, and you just decide which one makes the most sense for you and your current situation. Be sure to remind them of what you discussed, of any conversations you may have had. And again, remind them why connecting is a good idea for both of you. But most importantly, be real, be yourself. There's no need to pretend. I used to, when I was teaching classes on professional development and interview skills and public speaking and resume writing, I used to talk with my students and I would always ask the question, I said, if you were a hiring manager and somebody came in and interviewed as someone else, in other words, they put on an act just to get the job, would you be happy with that hire down the road when their true color started to come through? And not one person said, Oh, sure, yeah, that would be what I would like to have happen in my new hire. We would laugh and everything, but keep that in mind. You want people to take you for who you are. Don't put on an act or use words or language that you think someone else wants to hear. That can come across at first as pretty cool, but ultimately you're going to be who you are anyway, and they're going to wonder, wow, this doesn't really match up. There's an incongruence here. So again, be real and be yourself. And no, there is no rule saying that you have to connect with everyone whose business cards you have in your purse or pocket from a conference or live event. You should already be practicing strategic selectivity. And if you aren't, now would be a great time to start. What I mean by strategic selectivity is really choose by design who you connect with. Some people are all about just having the biggest number of followers or connections as possible without really giving any thought to who they're connecting to. Again, my philosophy is 
Less is more. I'd rather have fewer connections to people that I know, like, and trust than gobs and gobs of numbers of either robots or fake accounts or people that I just have absolutely nothing in common with and have no, no way of serving. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, take time to reflect. Set aside 30 to 45 minutes for writing about all the big ideas, all the insights, all the aha moments that you had while at the conference. If you don't capture these thoughts while they're fresh in your mind, they will be gone forever. Guaranteed in a day or two, you'll be back to your old routines. You'll have emails coming in, phone calls, family obligations, and maybe even a week into it, you'll think back and say, gosh, there was that one idea. What was it? If you don't capture it, when it comes into your brain, you're going to lose it. You might even take time on the airplane. If you've traveled somewhere to a conference, I often do that. I'll pull out my journal or a notebook and I'll make a list or I'll just write in longhand some of my thoughts and ideas about the conference, both good and bad. And here's the thing, I am amazed at how many conference notes have led to the development of new projects, new initiatives, and revenue streams in my own business. In fact, this conference that I just went to in Vegas last week, already I've got three new projects that are revenue generating, market driven projects that I'm going to be doing with strategic partners. And that, all three of them came from attending this conference. You never know when something you wrote down six months ago becomes the spark to your next big thing. And that's happened to me as well. I've gone back through old notebooks and read my notes and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh yes, I remember that now. I'm ready to move forward with that. But it's not front of mind because I'm focused on the present, right? So having those notebooks or however you want to record your reflections is going to serve you well down the road. Now, even if your conference experience wasn't that great, write down what happened anyway. Sometimes terrible conferences provide the best insights or solutions moving forward. I've been to some pretty crummy, I've been to some pretty crummy conferences where it was clear the organizers did not have a game plan, were not organized, were in it for the wrong reasons, and It was not only embarrassing for them, but very uncomfortable for attendees. But I'll tell you, I walked away and I was able to recognize I'll never do that. This is obviously not the kind of topic that people are drawn to. Reflect either way, good or bad. It's a really valuable habit to get into. And again, it can serve you well down the road or maybe even later in the week. The third and fourth final way for how to make the most of attending a conference and put points on your scoreboard is you want to make sure that you take action on something, anything, take action on something, commit to taking action on one new thing you picked up at the conference live event workshop. One of the biggest challenges I have seen in conference or workshop participants is they leave the workshop or they leave the conference and they are overwhelmed with so much information, with so many different angles coming at them. It's really hard for them to filter what's important and and what can they put to the side. I don't know about you, but I've gotten home with a bag stuffed with pamphlets and flyers and business cards and swag and handouts and on and on and on and I've sat there on the floor of my living room and spread it all out looked at it and said I don't even know where to start this is too much it's too overwhelming and so what I taught myself how to do is pick the one thing that just kept coming into my head the one speaker or the one breakout session or the one note that I wrote down and put a whole bunch of stars next to when I was sitting at the table listening to somebody on the stage and I focus on that and I put everything else back in the bag and tuck it away for either another day or the recycling bin, sometimes both. The goal is to make, in my opinion again, one small shift or change that can start getting you new results. It's not to immediately implement everything you learned in three days. That's impossible. In fact, it'll drive you crazy and in some cases lead you to analysis paralysis, which means there'll be no forward motion. The ball's going to be stuck on your 15-yard line. You're going to go three and out and wonder what just happened. 
Why do we keep turning the ball over? Stop driving yourself crazy. Focus on one thing. I promise you it's the right thing. Pick one and go with it. And then you can add another one down the road and then another one down the road, but just pick one. You know, conferences, live events, and workshops are tremendous resources of what's working and not working right now. If you go to a conference with the mindset of, I'm here to learn, I'm here to pick up as much as I can so that when I get home, I can pick one thing from as much as I could to implement in my business, in my life, in my career, you're going to be so far ahead of the majority of conference participants who, quite frankly, seem to be in zombie land. I mean, I'm an observant person and I do pay attention to what's going on with attendees. And even at the best conferences, I've seen people who are ditching out of the breakout sessions, who are ditching out of the general sessions. They're going to hang out at the pool. They're going to the bar to have a drink or they're going to tour whatever cool vacation spot the conference happens to be in. And in my opinion, that's a waste of time. That, those are the kinds of things you do on vacation or after hours not during this amazing content. And in all fairness, if the, if the conference is just really horrible, then sure, go ahead and lounge by the pool or take off and do some tourist things. But honestly, it's even bad conferences, you can pick up something of value and worth, again, reflecting, take action on something, and make sure that you connect post-conference with those people that you believe are a good fit for you to serve moving forward. Make a deal with yourself to do something with your experience, however big or small, it could really pay off one day, maybe even sooner than you think. And how cool would that be? How cool would it be for one little spark that someone said from stage or a person that you had a conversation with during the break led to a project or initiative that you could take to the bank? That to me, friends, is really what a conference and a live event is all about. Next time you go, take this wisdom with you. And in the meantime, you know I appreciate that you took the time to listen to the Player Position Podcast. It's been another great experience sharing my insights with my listening audience. And I look forward to next week's episode where I will be sharing with you the stories of a guest who is out there playing their position. Make it a great day. Hey team, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Play Your Position podcast, the place where stories matter and we make yours count. Make sure to subscribe to the show in iTunes if you haven't become a subscriber already so you never miss another episode. Question, are you on our email list? If not, you're missing out on your chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card every third Thursday of the month when we give one away to a lucky subscriber. Would your month be a little better with a $25 gift card to use on Amazon? Go now to MaryLouKazer.com forward slash subscribe to find out more. Again, that's MaryLouKazer.com forward slash subscribe. Thanks for listening to the Play Your Position podcast where your story matters and we make it count at MaryLouKaiser.com.